In this lesson, you'll cover variables in Flash CS4 using ActionScript 3. And before we get started, I just want to talk about some of those things that we actually kind of some housekeeping things for making comments and using a trace statement. Uh, typically, when you make a short comment, you want to use a double forward slash. But if you have a long comment to make, then you're going to use a forward slash asterisk and put your comment in between that and then asterisk forward slash. Uh, the trace variable, of course, is so important when it comes to uh, running any type of uh, troubleshooting in Flash. And basically, it's just trace uh, with whatever variable you want to trace. So we'll see a few examples of this as we go through this tutorial. It's just uh, in Flash, and especially in the old days, you really needed to throw this wherever you needed it. For example, if you had a for statement and it wasn't acting the way you should, you put the trace statement in there to see if the data that's supposed to come out is coming out the way it should, and anywhere else you needed it in your code. And uh, it was one at one time one of my primary tools for debugging. Now I use Flex, of course, and that has a uh, much more uh, debugging editor in it. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Uh, whenever you create a variable, you want to go use the var syntax, and then you put whatever the variable name is, and then you need to data type it. And in this case, I'm going to data type it string, and my name Mike, and then we'll have another uh, variable and my text two string uh, lively. And so let's go ahead and trace out my name. So I'm going to use a trace statement. And in that, I'm going to use a concatenation. And so I'm going to take two strings and add them together using a plus sign, just as you would in the, with numbers, but now with uh, text. And in order to get that space between my first name and last name, I have a little space here, adding basically a space using a text. Okay, so let's go ahead and run that and see what happens. And there's my name right there, Mike Lively. So it worked real well. Concatenation is alive and well. So let's go to the next topic. So I want to talk about numbers and variable types. Uh, specifically in the book, we use basically three types of number types, data types. And that's one is a number, which is a floating point. So there's my number right there. And we use integer which is basically all the positive and negative whole numbers. And we use uint, which is the units, basically all whole numbers and zero, but no negative numbers. So that's all there is, the three that you need. Now, why would you need to do that? Why do you need to go from number, in and uint? And with this uint, don't put unit. It's u int. Basically, number is the larger of the three, and it basically requires the most processor. And so if you want to actually go leaner on your processor, you want to come down to integer if you're only using integers, and you want if you're only using uh, positive numbers at zero. Uh, it makes a difference. So uh, pay attention to data typing. You can actually speed things up by uh, choosing the right data type. The next one, which is so important, is, of course, the Boolean, which is where you can set your flag. So lots of times you're going to have a code where you're running uh, basic and conditional. So did my car crash, for example, if, it's, if true, run this method, if false, run that method. So you could be continually setting flags uh, to true and false for many uh, processes, especially games. This type of data type that you'll see a lot in the book, we're going to show you an example from chapter 12, is the array data type. Very simple, just once again var, create your array name, and then hit array. And in this case, we're going to create an array, and we're going to have 0, 1, 2, and 3, 4. So we actually have five values. And let's go ahead and trace the zeroth value. That's actually the first value of your array. So remember that each array starts with 0. So we'll do a control test on that. See what we get. And there that is 0. Now, if I want to print out everything in the array, I can actually do trace right here my array dot to string. And that will give me the CSV value. CSV is comma separated values. And I actually can do a lot with that string. I can take out the commas and then manipulate it again as an array if I want to. Let's go ahead and control test that and see what we get. And there we have it, the, all the contents of the array, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Nice little trick. And you actually use that quite a bit uh, in your work with Flex or Flash. Let's go back again. Now this whole array thing is very interesting. You actually put anything in an array that you want. And I actually have a commented out code here, but we'll look at it real quick. And this is from chapter 12 of the book, uh, Professional Paper Vision. And what we're doing is actually we're sticking in bitmaps into our array. We're called My Cloud. And this particular application, we're creating clouds randomly in the sky. So we have clouds 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So we actually have six clouds there that we're throwing out. And we're iterating on a, over a loop. And we're actually setting those clouds in an X 
Z position somewhere on the stage at a certain elevation Y. So let's go ahead and just see it. So we're going to run this program so you can actually see what's going on here. So I'm going to bring up my Flex project and let's do a run on that. And this was a CSIS conversion. And you're going to see these clouds. So I'm going to come along here and I'm going to click on some of these menu buttons here. And you see some clouds kind of zoom across the stage there. And those clouds actually have been placed on there randomly using my array. There we go. There, see the clouds pass across the stage? And there's a cloud right there. Let's go. Oh, there there's a few clouds. They're, they're moving pretty fast, but you can see them up here at the top there. And that's pretty much what's generated by that piece of code. And all those bitmaps for those clouds pretty much were set in that array. Okay? Let's move on. And this brings us to a very important point. I had mentioned earlier that it's very important to data type. And this is so important that Adobe had realized this. And in Flash CS4, they've actually created a new type of array. And this is called a vector. And it's really an array, but what it gives you ability to do is data type that array. So now as you put something in a vector, it can take anything. It can take strings, it can take bitmaps, it can take methods, it can take tons of stuff. But that really is a very heavy CPU intensive process. So what has happened in CS4 is that you've actually put a new type of array called a vector and you can actually basically in a sense data type that array so you run, run it a lot leaner and so here we have a, a var you declare it the same way you have my nums we'll use a number in this example and you have a vector dot int that sets the type pretty much the data type of that vector array and it's an integer in this case and then new vector you declare it or instantiate it 5 tells you the index number, and FOSS tells you if you can add to that array or not. See, in a regular array, you have, can have blank spaces. So you could have a, something in position 2, then a bunch of blanks until position 9, but in a vector array, you cannot. And that actually enables you to run a lot leaner and faster on the CPU. And so what we've done here, just like a regular array, all the array functions work for the vector as well. We set all our different values as minus 2, 1, 0, 1, and 2. Let's go ahead and trace the array. So I'm going to run this function and see if we get those values back. And let's see what we got. There we go. Minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, and 2. So it works well, but let me just tell you this extremely important point. If you're going to start porting Paper Vision 9, Flash 9, into um, CS4 or Flash 10, you've got to pay attention to your arrays and you've got to change them to vectors. Okay? And that will make things run leaner and faster. And now there's one more important thing I need to say about variables. It is very important that you declare your variables properly or in the right place. And so here's a function, for example, and we've got a little for loop going on here. And right here, in this spot right here, you see we're declaring our variable in the for loop. So each time you loop, you actually declare the variable. Now it takes a little bit of extra CPU to declare a variable. But it may be that you don't have to declare it in the loop. You may be able to declare that variable outside the loop. And if so, you can save yourself CPU stress. So in the function below, we see we're actually declaring that same variables outside of the loop. You see that right there? So before you get to that loop, you declare your variable, and then you loop, and you don't have to declare it each time in the loop. Now you're going to think, oh man, this just makes common sense. Of course you don't want to declare your variable every time in the loop. But you would be surprised at how many people declare a variable inside the loop that doesn't have to be declared inside of that loop and iterate it over it over and over again redeclaring it. So it's something you need to pay attention to. You can't always do that. Many times in applications you have to declare that variable inside of the loop. But sometimes you can get away with that, thus saving some CPU time. Well that's all I have to say about variables. Next time we're going to hit functions.